Hey everyone. Uh, so we did an activity that we traced the carbon atoms throughout the carbon cycle. So there weren't really any instructions on Canvas yesterday. So here's what we're going to do. Um, we had these sheets, and you can be you can access that sheet in Canvas. Um, that's going to be linked. Um, but what it is is you're going to start with a carbon atom, and these circles or ovals represent reservoirs. So carbon is stored in the atmosphere in lots of different ways. It could be stored in the oceans, it could be stored as fossil fuels, it could be stored in plants. Um, lots of different ways that they can, um, there's 12 different reservoirs we're going to use. So how we go from carbon reservoir to carbon reservoir is going to be modeled by rolling some dice. Okay, so we're going to roll some dice and those numbers are going to represent what our, our track is. So what I'm going to do is I'll kind of show you what's, I'll, I'll give you like two and then I'll, I'll pause it um, and I'm going to try to insert a picture of this like filled out um, or with all these cards like the sequence that I, that yours happened to go in. Um, so I'll, if I can insert that picture, picture into my iMovie, um, we're good. If not, I'll uh, figure it out. So um, the idea is we're going to start with some carbon reservoir and I happen to roll a, a, a 12, okay? So we had some cards, and I go and I find carbon, uh, or carbon reservoir number 12. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to read that or not. I'll always reverse for you. So it says carbon in the rivers and lakes, fresh waters. So what I do is I'm gonna write number 12, carbon in rivers and lakes, parentheses, fresh water. And I'll show you that in a little bit. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll my dice again. I happen to roll a 12 once again. So a carbon can't stay in the same reservoir without some process happening. And that's what these squares are rubber get, gonna represent is a process that is going to go through and transform it. So on your worksheet, um, there are these, and again, my camera is reversed right now, but there are these processes that you can reference and you can look at. And these are chemical processes that will convert, uh, remove carbon from a reservoir. So that's what you're gonna have to figure out. So because you can't stay in the same carbon reservoir twice, I rolled a 12. According to the instructions that I gave class, then you get number 13. So then your carbon is gonna be found in the soil. I roll my dice again, now I get an eight, and then you get a different card. And the idea is, so carbon, or card number 12, carbon is in the rivers and lakes, fresh water. Then number right here, uh, number 13, carbon is in the soil. Then right here, it will be uh, number eight, carbon or CO2 from the atmosphere dissolved in seawater, volcano spewing carbon dioxide bubbles that dissolve in salt water. So you're gonna go through and I'll roll these dice and I'll fill this chart in for you and I'll take a picture and I'll put it in next, okay? So once I show you this, hit pause so you can fill in the circles along the way. See you in a bit. Okay, so hopefully you you were able to, I was able to insert that picture, and here are our 10 rolls of the dice. So um, you probably can't see it, it's, it's, it's flipped for you because I'm doing a forward-facing camera, um, so that picture is going to be important. So these are the, the 10 um, reservoirs that your carbon atom is going to be in. So then the idea is you got to take this sheet that's in canvas, this is on one side, this is on the other side, okay? These are the processes. So what chemical processes or what processes can get us from carbon in the river to carbon in the soil? And that's what you have to go through and you gotta figure out. Now it could be more than one process. Um, it might be multiple processes. So we start with carbon in the rivers um, and then how does it get to carbon in the soil? Um, so, it could, so if we look through the different processes, um, hmm, it would probably, one of the best ways to get it in, uh, maybe I would say burial and rock formation, um, or hmm, or we could go with the it's in the rivers. Okay, um, so I I'm going to go a different route. So I'm going to go with the two processes. So if we start with carbon in the rivers and lakes and the fresh water, through the process of photosynthesis, it's on these cards. Through the process of photosynthesis, um, we would, that carbon would be transferred from the rivers into plants. Um, but that doesn't get to plants in the soil, but now we have carbon in the plants. So then we could go through and we could use death and decomposition and excretion of organisms 
So if we have um, if we have plants that photosynthesize and now those plants die and decompose, then that carbon is deposited in the soil. That was a two process step that got us from carbon in the rivers to carbon in the soil. Then we gotta go through and say, oh, how do I get from carbon in the soil to carbon or carbon dioxide from the atmosphere dissolved in the ocean? Um, so now it's in the soil, so how do we get it from the soil into um, into the atmosphere and then seawater. Um, this one might be a couple steps. Um, all right. All right. So I think the, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go through burial and rock formation because now it's in the soil. So that sediment is going to get compacted. I'm just reading it off here. It's compacted, squeezed together to make a rock. That's the first process. But then through the process of erosion, um, where we can transport or move weathered rocks and materials to a different location, um, which then gets it into the ocean or gets it into the, the ocean, followed by dissolving in rain or seawater. So there's a three-step process, um, burial and rock formation, then erosion, followed by uh, dissolving in salt water. So sometimes multiple, you kind of got to use your imagination a little bit, but the idea is you're going to trace this carbon atom through 10 different steps. That's the first step. The next part is you got to write a narrative. So I would suggest a first person approach to this and bullet point. I know it says paragraphs, I would bullet point. And I would bullet point and like what was like a bullet point for from here to here. I am a carbon atom. Um, as a carbon atom, I originated in the river. Um, I don't even remember what we said. Through the process of photosynthesis, the carbon, I was then transferred into a plant, and then that plant died and was decomposed and now is in the soil. Next bullet point. The car, I, I, because I'm the carbon atom, am in, from the, in the soil, but then through a process of bare rock formation, um, I was put into the rocks which then I eroded um, into a different spot, and then I was um, into the ocean. I eroded into the ocean where I was then dissolved by rainwater um, or salt water to be then deposited in the ocean. Next bullet point, how do I get from here to here? How do I get from here to here? So that's that part. The last part is, and this is just made up numbers, it's a frequency graph. So how many times did I roll the number two on my this is how many times I rolled what dice combination. So you're just going to go through and say, I rolled a 12 two times. I rolled a 13 once. Rolled a 13. I rolled a 5 how many times? And that's what this frequency graph is. So what are you submitting in Canvas? This image, which I'm going to send to you as well. Or you're going to take a screenshot during the video. Screenshot this. Submit this once it's filled in. Okay, because you got to fill your own in. Um, and then this side, that's your submissions. If you have questions, let me know.